Hey everyone, this is Chris and Shu. How's it going? Um, I wanted to uh, make a sort of a follow-up video to the last video that uh, featured my wife and I, Shu, uh, from China. Uh, we made a video and there I was talking a lot about African American culture. Myself being an African -Ameri American, I wanted to talk more about uh, that video. I, read, I saw the video posted, I read through the comments, and I must say the interaction was amazing. The, I, read, I pretty much agree with all the comments that were written there and it sparked some really good discussion. And that's one of the things I like about Lily's channel is that her audience is, is not your typical YouTube comment type, <laughs> type of audience. Her audience are, are intelligent people, people who, who comment. There are lots of things that are said here. I want to address some of these. I want to read some of these comments um, on this video. I want to uh, address some of these and kind of continue this dialogue. I think it's, I think it's great uh, discussion. And uh, what I do want to say is that at the time, you know, we were having a casual lunch and, uh, you know, we recorded that video. And I wanted to, I gave a very high level uh, viewpoint of what I was trying to say without digging too much uh, deep into it. And I wanted to, in this video, provide a little bit more depth into kind of what I was saying and so that we can all understand. Because I think that at the end of the day, uh, we can all get something out of it. And this video wasn't for just African Americans or even just Asians, but really anyone. I think anyone could pretty much take the principles that we talk about here and apply them in any relationship. Um, and if, if you're an interracial or Blasian couple and you're dating and you're, let's say, an Asian girl and an Asian guy, I think by watching this video, you can gain some resources. And I hope you guys keep watching because I have something to give to you uh, in this video later on. So hopefully you'll keep watching. And um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, point out that uh, the comments were, were great. I agree with them. I'm going to read some of them. Uh, if I can. Uh, so some of the comments, uh, 0 1200 says, I agree that, you know, our culture has been taken away, but on the other side, my parents were from Africa and came over here to the States. And I kind of just follow their culture. I don't know if that makes sense. That's what it says. Uh, shout out to my boy Dexter Williams. Uh, he commented a lot. Uh, thank you, Dexter. He says some really cool things. He says uh, <laughs> he needs to study more, meaning Chris, myself. <laughs> he needs to study more. American, she was behind the camera by the way, say hi Shu. Hello. So I can hear you. Okay, she's over there laughing at me. He <laughs> needs to study more. American culture is African culture rebranded. He's absolutely wrong. We don't have a business culture, so barely we own what we produce. Um, I mean, he's like, you know, uh, H. Zark or Hazark says, in my opinion, I think African American have created their own strong, unique culture, so I have to disagree with him. Though I really love that bit that your culture feeds your body, spirit, and mind. I'm going to quote you, sir. Uh, we have Itachi Uchi, Uchi, Uchiwa, sorry, Itachi Uchiwa says, he is not wrong. You agree that you don't have your own culture or very little. Um, and uh, he says that, um, uh, so basic, basically that he's saying, you know, he, he's not wrong. Uh, there's some, some other comments that says, uh, Nathan Cole says, I can follow what Chris was saying in terms of how Shu coming to America still has traits from the way she was rooted and grew up in China, but we can't say the same thing that, you know, rooted in African culture. But I don't exactly agree that black America don't have a culture. Um, Shay 1000 says, but we do have a culture, the fact that we have provided so much to the world, and um, it's basically amazing. All these comments are great. I can go on and on. Um, it's, it's really, and I totally agree. So I want to break it down a little bit and to, to dive a little deeper into this. Uh, black folks, you know, when I say black folks, I'm going to talking about African Americans. We've given so much to the world. I think hip hop music, for example, I think hip hop is the most listened to music around the world, like number one. And I mean, we just created that. Uh, we've created, we invented the toilet, we invented stoplights, we invented, you know, George Washington Carver produced synthesized rubber from plants. Uh, we have, um, the modern uh, video game console was created by an African American. Um, we have the list goes on and on and on and on. The radiator, you know, the list just goes on and on and on. And I think the way I look at it is, these are uh, pretty much I call them cultural artifacts. Um, for people to endure so much, yet still produce amazing things and give back so much to the world, is an amazing is an amazing feat. And you have to ask how, how, and why, how, and, and you have to question uh, uh, things. And the reason why we're able to do these things is because it comes from a root, uh, a cultural root. I'm talking our ancestral roots, because 
my parents and my grandparents and great-great-grandparents and my heritage going all the way back, I look at it as I'm an accumulation of all of them inside of me living in my DNA and my blood, same as you in your DNA and your blood. And so I can see a kid dancing on the street or do creative things here in Atlanta and see something similar in Africa because it's in our DNA. And that's something to be very proud of. It's something to be, makes you stronger, gives you confidence and, and, and motivation. And this is very important that even though culture may have been taken away from us or we feel robbed or every time we come out with something new, someone copies it and rebrands it and oh, it just, it's just, I hate that. It happens like almost every day now on a daily basis. You know, I remember back when um, I started undergrad in college, you know, we used to give each other dap like, yo, what's up, what's up, you know, like in the neighborhood. I got to college and the guys were like, you know, my white friends were like, give me a fist pump. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> we didn't have names for the stuff that we did. We just, we just did them. We, we, we didn't call it a fist pump or give me a pound. I didn't even know. I was like, what? Oh, you want me to? All right. You know, like that was around late 90s, early 2000s where that kind of came out. But for us, we grew up with that kind of stuff all the time. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a bunch of stories like that. I'm sure you can relate. And so what I look at it as is I want us to be able to do more things. We've done so much already and you're right so much for the world, uh, you know, and, but I think that we can do so much more if we can tap into the source. So I'm all about tapping into the source. And the way that I got there, I want to talk a little bit about my personal journey and the journey I'm still on and raising this awareness because at the end of the day, when you watch this video or you watch the last video, either you're going to wake up the next day and you're going to continue to do whatever you've been doing, if you're comfortable with that, or you're going to change and try to create a better version of yourself. I always strive to create a better version of myself. If you have a certain body or you're imagining yourself with a certain kind of body and physique and say, that is the best version of myself, I wonder what that looks like even if for a short moment, right? <laughs> you know, you want to know what that looks like? So, you know, you want to strive to create a better version of yourself. And I think through each of us creating better versions of ourselves, we elevate our people and as a whole. So, um, a few things. I talked about how a culture is a blueprint for your physical body, your mind, and uh, your, spirit, your spirit. And uh, I think that uh, I just want to first make the point that all the things we've done, I look at it as a result of the, of the source, of the root of the source. So we're able to do a lot of these things. When you mentioned jazz or blues, we made, a, we made jazz, we made blues, we made rock and roll, hip hop, all these things. And those are the results, not the cause. Those are the residual results, what I call cultural artifacts. But we need, what, we, what we miss is the, what we're absent of is the source. So when I say we don't, we're, we're absent culture, what I'm really saying is we are absent the source, we're absent the root, right? So as a result, we get these cultural artifacts, you know, it's kind of like Jason Bourne movie, you know, the Jason Bourne movie where he wakes up, he has amnesia, and they say, no, he's like, I speak German. Oh, I know how to fight. Like, <laughs> he kind of understands that he kind of can do these things, but he doesn't know why he knows how to do these things, but he does these things. But it's only later on until he finds out that he's part of this big organization. And this is what really helps him to really have a more holistic view. I look at this the same way. We're doing amazing things around the world, but we sort of don't, we're not tapping into the source. My goal is to tap into that source so that we can do even more things than we've already done. So when I, you're not going to get there if you don't ask questions. You should hang around people that ask questions more so than people who don't ask questions. It's like being in the matrix where you can be there, you can be comfortable, but the minute you start asking questions, Neil starts asking questions, then he starts getting together with a group of people who are also asking questions, then he's able to see outside of the matrix and see kind of both worlds. And if you want to live in the world and live in the matrix and be comfortable, that's okay, but at least you should know where you are and what you're, what's around you. So for my journey, if I can, I want to take a personal view in, into uh, sort, of, sort of my journey and uh, maybe I'll read more comments. There were some comments about, you know, American culture and I call it European culture because for me uh, the words European, Western, I mean, they're all synonymous. Like when people say Western culture, like they're really talking about European culture and American culture is really European culture. In fact, uh, uh, one great, one of our elders, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, which I'll probably talk about in a bit, she mentioned that uh, at least uh, our elders, they mentioned, uh, they call this people activity. So when I, when I mention people activity to you, I'll define what that is, but I want you to think about here in America, 
who really runs this form of people activity. So in alphabetical order, those people activity are, the all forms of people activity are economics, okay, education, all right, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Okay, so, you know, pretty much for us, I mean, this is dominated, um, you know, in, in, in European society, in this culture that we live in, and, and that's who we adopt, that's who we, like one comment said, I just kind of follow the gist of what everybody else is doing. And that's, that's okay, nobody's faulting you, but you just have to have this awareness. Um, so for my personal journey, what I said was, I said if, I said if, you know, if a culture is a blueprint for a physical body, mental, how to feed your body, feed your mind, feed your soul, then what should I be feeding myself? And is there an order to it? And I don't know if there's an order. This is just my personal opinion. But I feel like my intuition says if I'm sick and I call, you know, I call out for work, I can't work today. It's not because I can't type, but it's because I can't mentally focus because I'm sick. I'm physically, biologically sick. I can't have the mental focus that I need. Also, if, I'm, if I lose someone close to me, and I'm not my mentally down, my spirits will be low, right? So then you have the physical body, your, your, your mental mind being dependent on your physical body and your spirituality being dependent on your mental state and, and vice versa. I mean, this can work in other ways too. Like you can lose someone, same example, and then you won't eat for the next couple of days because you're feeling bad and, and it's affecting your physical body. So they're all kind of connected, but at the same time, you have to start somewhere. I started at the physical level. I said, okay, I need to get my physical body right. So I just kind of cleaned the slate. I literally just cleaned the slate and said, I'm going to eat the most basic foods, you know, and research what I eat. Um, I end up getting thrown into a category some people will term a vegan. I, I never started out saying I want to be a vegan. I just, <laughs> I'm just literally cleaning the slate. I need a reference point or something um, and, and, and just start eating like that. And, and, and even until today, and you know, th all this happened before uh, my wife and I got together, by the way. So, you know, I was kind of already doing this. And then, you know, I started to eat the same way then as I eat today. You know, I, don't, I still don't eat meat or fish or, or, or anything like that. Um, I still eat sweets here and there, some dairy, you know, I, I eat ice cream or a slice of cake, you know, but I try to stay away from eggs and, and meat and things like that. And just ma mainly focus on vegetables, nuts, fruits. Um, you know that, and, and a lot of other recipes. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the point, the point I'm trying to make is that if you're trying to create the best optimal version of yourself, um, a, a culture usually dictates that. And then what I was trying to say in the video with foods. See, a lot of people in the video when I say, "Oh, my wife eats Asian food," it's kind of like, "Oh, because she likes Asian food." Like. On the surface, that's what it looks like, but you got to realize that when the culture dictates what you eat, there's, a, there's bigger implications going on. It's not just about how it tastes. In fact, some people, the first thing they think about when they talk about different cultures, different foods, they're thinking about their taste buds. But actually, your taste buds, the point, the reason why we have taste buds is, is to be healthy because it's not just to necessarily enjoy the food. <laughs> you know, I can't remember all the senses of taste. It's like um, umami, sweet, bitter, sour and some other, you know, whatever. Sp spicy is not a, a, a taste, an actual taste. That. Anyway, um, it's not classified that way anyway. Anyway, so the point is, if you eat a variety of foods, like a variety of, like, if you don't know, if you don't even know the word vegetable, right, you don't know anything, right? Because humans should be able to be healthy without knowing anything about the word vegetable, right? I mean, we're made, we're built to be able to be healthy, right? It just makes sense. So if I ate something that was sour and I ate some sweet and I ate some umami type taste, you have to look that one up. And some sweet or bitter or whatever, bitter from the vegetables, sour from lemons and things. Uh, sour, sour taste clears toxins, bitter taste, you know, vegetables. Builds up all these different things. Then as long as I'm building a variety of it or you cook a dish, make sure you put some sour, put some sweet, put some bitter. You're going to be healthy because you should have the knowledge that eating a variety of uh, tastes is healthy. You're having a variety of versus only eating salty or only eating sweet or only eating you need to have the combination so it's not about just the taste the culture dictates that because ancient knowledge shows you how to make you more healthy and thus the a better version of yourself so food is very important it's not uh, just about taste and that's why I had to really look into this stuff um, after that I started to feed my mental 
side. In the black community, we have a word for it. Uh, we call it being, uh, we call it black consciousness. And by now, you've probably heard a lot about that because it's growing and that's a great thing. Um, black culture, um, uh, we're, we're trying to reach a point where, you know, we have a critical mass of people really on the same page and in sync. Because the other reason why I said we're absent sort of the source is not only do we not have on the source, but we don't have this unification. We don't have this an organized, unified thing. And someone, I think, pointed that out in the comments as well. I don't have your name right now. But uh, that's also another thing. That's, that's another reason why I said it. But, but we can and we will. And I believe we will. And it starts by asking questions. None of what I've looked into I would have gained if I didn't ask the question. Uh, I, my mental consciousness, uh, I start read about history. I start to read about uh, sort of self-identify. You know, where do I come from? Who am I? Where do I fit at in the world? Where do I fit in the world? Uh, there are things I began to question and began to think about. You know, the educational system, all these things of people activity I listed to you, economics, education, entertainment, you know, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Like, you have to really start to think about. You get a whole new perspective, medication, the way you diagnose treatment. Should I agree with the whole uh, germ analogy that uh, modern medicine gives about germs and, and the way it attacks your body or you say someone had a heart attack well actually maybe you attack your heart the heart didn't attack you so what was it how were you attacking your heart right so even like slight adjustments to your thinking could open up whole new levels of, uh, of thinking and perception and, uh, and eventually the spirituality side now I haven't researched too much into the spirituality side but as far as I'm concerned, I would probably start with the family unit. I think that uh, there's a spiritual bond that happens in a marriage or you know, in a relationship between a husband and wife. There's, there's roles to play between the male principle and the female principle and the spiritual energy that I get off to her or the spiritual energy that I receive from her and that energy and then the energy from both of us going into our children. I think it's, it's a very special thing. And in fact, even in Asian culture, you have what's called the yin and the yang, right? Um, and, and even, you know, that's, that's spirituality, that's these principles. Um, in, in fact, uh, in history, when the Greeks were learning from the Egyptians, they, they took this kind of this law and they turned it, they, they, they messed up the translation, they turned it the law of opposites, like true and false, um, male, female, opposite. But actually, um, originally the Egyptians never said these were opposite things. They said these were complementary. There's a difference. There's a slight difference between something being opposite and something being complementary. And um, it's a very important thing. I think with the yin and the yang, they got it right. Because even if you look at the graphic, there's like a black dot in the white half and the, and the white dot in the black half. <laughs> it's it's complementary. It's not saying it's opposite. It's complementary. Male and female are complementary, not opposite. And that has huge implications. So it's things like this you have to look into. I started to educate myself on a mental level um, on this uh, consciousness. Um, and, and so... And, and I just mentioned a little bit about the spirituality. So I kind of wanted to, to, to point that out. Um, you know, hang around people who ask questions because that's what's going to really uh, get you to the next level. Um, in the comment section, when you leave comments, you know, uh, I know a, people water down the word culture a lot. Because isn't it true that I could say New York culture or LA culture or Atlanta culture, right? We can throw the word culture anywhere, but the point I was trying to make, I was, I was talking on a very, very high level in the context of feeding your, your body, your mind, and your, and your spirituality, your soul, right? So I was speaking on that level, and um, I think it was too high level, and I, and I owe you guys an explanation. I owe you guys this. That's why I'm doing it, because I feel like you guys gave great discussion in the comments and things, and I owe you guys this. Um, and I wanted to distinguish between the cultural artifacts and tapping into the source. So. Um, I said I wanted to, to give you something, and, um, and what I want to give you is, for those who are really interested and want to learn and grow, uh, I, t I gave you my personal uh, journey or the journey that I'm on, and I wanted to give you some good references that, if you don't know where to start, how things that you can look at. So I want to start with the physical body and health. So here's a book that I have. I, I pulled some books off my, 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 uh, lab from my library there on the, sh on the shelf. And I just want to show you a few things. This one is called Afro Vegan. Okay, it's by a guy named Brian Terry, and he just has awesome recipes and awesome things. My wife is over there smiling because she's like, he don't cook a dang thing from that book, and that's true because she cooks a lot, and it's just so good. I haven't had time to cook as much as I used to, but I need to crack this open. Um, 
it's kind of cool because actually he's a he's a Blasian couple too, and you can see their beautiful child over there. Um, I don't know where his wife is from. Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay. I think it. Yeah, I'm not probably sure. Taiwan or Philippines or something. She looks like she could be Taiwanese. I think. Anyway, that's a Brian Terry Afro Vegan. Um, it's a cookbook with recipes and things. Uh, this is African Holistic Health, which I study under Dr. Leila of Africa. Uh, amazing, amazing book. He's really big on YouTube. You should check him out. Um, the way you spell his name is L L A I L A, and then Laila O, and then Africa A F R I K A. African Holistic Health. Amazing guy. Um, he does a lot of things, uh, and and he has a he has a lot of good credentials, and he talks <laughs> about many many things. Um, this is a book uh, by this is a book called The Way of Herbs. Okay, this is from uh, Michael Tierra. You might have family members who get sick or have diabetes or high blood pressure, and you come in here and they'll tell you literally formulas and herbs and things to use to help cure yourself. You come from the earth, you should be able to cure, your, cure yourself from the earth, right? Um, this is another book from the uh, Dr. Leila Africa has a herbal class, and he teaches out of this big old book. Um, it's called. Um, uh, the complete textbook of holistic self-diagnosis and as you can see from the diagram uh, the human face actually has ways that you can look at the human face to figure out which organs are in trouble also you can look at your tongue and do like a tongue test and see you have a liver problem you have a kidney problem um, so these are all things that you can look at um, if you're not you know if, you, if you're tired of taking medications and drugs and, and you're trying to find alternatives um, that's important. So I, I kind of wanted to point out just that small selection. Um, I have a few more. Uh, let me point one thing out too. I, I follow herbalists like, uh, so Dr. Leila Africa is one. I follow Dr. Sebi a lot. Um, if you recently saw on the news, he just got killed in Honduras. He's from Honduras and um, it was very unfortunate. Uh, I got a chance to see him live. He came out to Atlanta last year and there was a lot of people who were there. I saw him live and it was, it was great. Uh, I, I uh, consume herbs from him. Here's here's um, one such herb from him. These are uh, bromide plus. This is uh, basically uh, sea moss, sea moss bladder rack mix. It's it's amazing herb. Uh, it has um, like 90 something percent of the nutrients of what the human body needs. It has all kinds of things. Um, I'm just showing you guys some stuff. The things I say on the video. Are not, I'm not just making it up, they're grounded in, in, in research and study and things and uh, I think it's important for us to realize where we are so that we can improve. In terms of my um, mental sort of consciousness state, there's, I said, you know, there's things that deal with politics, history, uh, different things you can know. I'm an engineer, I like scientific facts and evidence and, and, and uh, that kind of material, so I'm really into that. Um, here's one book. Everybody knows this one. This is the Souls of Black Folks. I'm sure a lot of you have this. Um, and this is from W.B. Du Bois. So this is, this is amazing. Um, and again, this video is for anyone. Um, anyone, if you're a Blasian couple, you might be at home, you might be a Korean woman wanting to date a, a black man. And knowing sort of history, and this is sort of more African American history, knowing this stuff, it can improve your relationship, just like he would study your, your culture as well. This is Lalo Africa once again. Obviously, I, I like this guy a lot. Um, melanin, what makes black people black. It's very scientific. It's great. It's awesome. Um, it's a small book. Um, he goes into a lot of things. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of things. He, melanin is more than just your skin pigmentation. It's actually deeper than that. It controls most functions in your body, to be honest. Um, and so it teaches you a lot, about, a lot about that. And it's very, very, very useful. And also how to nourish your melanin, right? And to maximize it because... You know, allows you to do a lot of things. And it's it's interesting. You know, I had a conversation with my wife, and we're you know talking about the slanted eyes. And you know, it's interesting because if you look back, uh, some some things I've read into research. You know, if you back the geology had a geography and geology had a uh, had a uh, taken this for the slanty eyes because it's you know if you're if you're from a group of people who lived say in a mountainous region, and you were say on the upper part of the mountain, and the wind blew from the bottom up your eyes will slant up this way. Because when wind is blowing, you have to squint. And after generations, you know, they, they, uh, nature makes it so that the children don't have to really squint or use that muscle. It'll just automatically be there. So if the wind is blowing from bottom up, it'll slant up this way. 
if you're at the bottom of say the mountain, the wind is blowing down, your eyes will slant down. And if the wind is blowing straight at you, your eyes will, will slant this way. And that's why we have slanted eyes. That's why it's not just specific to Asian culture. My wife is smiling, right? smiling right now so much. Anyway, so you know, that's why you get like Nelson Mandela and, and people in Africa with slanted eyes, and you're like, wait a minute. You know, my wife, you know, here in America, she's been in here in America for several years, she's like, hey, that black guy looks Chinese. Is he Blasian? You know, it's, got, it's kind of funny because I'm always like, actually, the Chinese looks like the black man, you know, <laughs> right? No, but um, so we always joke like that, and uh, it's kind of interesting perspective. Um, more books, uh, Stolen Legacy, my wife is reading this one right now, it's really good. This is a, more of a history book um, into, uh, just from George G.M. James. So, I mean, these are books that you hear people quote all the time. Stolen Legacy, George G.M. James. You know, the Egyptian mystery system, you know, just, just talking about the history of, uh, you gain some history of the educational system that was in Africa um, before the Greeks came uh, and the Arabs came and stuff like that. So this is a good one for mental cost. You have Chancellor Williams, of course, this is a classic. Um, the Destruction of Black Civilization from 4500 BC to 2000 AD. Really good stuff, really good information. A lot of people have questions. Um, you will often hear people in the black community say, "Oh, we were once great. We we're awesome people." And people will say, "Well, what happened?" You know, if you with a, you know, you're dating an interracial, you're like, "Well, what happened to you?" You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, this will help explain at least historically some of the things that happened. Um, and then finally, you have Dr. Cr uh, Dr. Uh, Francis Cress Walsing, which I mentioned earlier. This is the ISIS Papers, the Keys to the Colors. Awesome book. She recently passed away. A few years back, um, status year ago, um, she's one of my elders that passed away, and she has a lot of good information and material here. It's more getting to more of the political systems that we that we have here, and kind of freeing your mind from these some of these struggles in political system. Um, that's all the books I'm going to show you for now, and I just wanted to kind of share this with you with you all, kind of what journey I'm taking. I appreciate Lily, your channel is awesome. For, for allowing me to say this on your platform and uh, I think that your channel is very diverse and you're always uh, putting up new material and original material and hopefully this makes it uh, to your site as a follow-up to the other video to help people understand deeply because we're truly a powerful strong great people and I really didn't represent that to the fullest in the last video um, in that short amount of time that I had so I wanted to give you this video to follow up and say that we are we are great we have done great things as a people but I'm not satisfied with just the residual cultural artifacts and things we've done so far I think we can do so much more if we if we have a unified mechanism to teach people how to feed their physical body their mental mind and their spiritual uh, their spirituality so thank you this is Christian Shu see you guys later bye bye, bye.